Jake Ludington here at HP Discover, and I'm here with Rainer. And you drove from Norway to the, to South Africa in in world record time, I understand, with a uh, a car similar to this one. Correct. In 2014, last year September, we drove 17,840 kilometers from Norway to South Africa in a new world record time. The old one was from 1984 uh, with 21, eight, 28 days, and we drove 21 days. Actually. Our plan was going uh, lower than 10, which is quite possible actually, because of the road are quite nice now in comparison to 1984. So, but we had an accident in Tanzania. There was another car just driving towards us, quite quite uh, straight, so we couldn't even break much and, and and go around. So we had an accident for 13 days to repair the cars, bringing lots of spare parts from the front end to, to Tanzania. Uh, two mechanics coming also from Europe to help us to get the car back on road. So 13 days it took us and then we drove again from the place where we had an accident down to South Africa to finish it. And uh, would you take now the net time, that means the, the pure driving time without taking the, world, uh, the, the repair time, that would be 8 days, 10 hours. Yeah. So 8 days, 10 hours. And wow. That's, that's the, the one we could achieve if we wouldn't have that accident. So, so, so what motivates you to want to drive from, from Norway uh, to South Africa? It's almost the same like for mountaineers when they go up the mountain, you know, and then they want to get to the top, they want to get to the summit, and uh, it's the same with doing world records on, on cars, you know. So, so aside from the accident, um, it, were there any um, other sorts of challenges you guys faced on the way? Uh, we drove this tour twice before uh, to film it also and there at the filming time in April we had a rain season in Kenya and at uh, this uh, northern Kenya part of the road there's lots of rain, there was a rain season and uh, we get stuck uh, two days uh, and, and helped out by Chinese uh, caterpillars who work there on a the road right now and uh, they pulled us out and uh, that, that was quite a situation in a more or less a desert. Uh, and it's only uh, raining twice a year when the monsoon comes over from India, so that was really the time when the monsoon was there. So. But now, uh, for September this year, I'm, th I'm, I'm quite confident that we can do it. Yeah. You're going to try to do it in, in eight, eight hours with no accidents? Uh, probably not eight hours. Or not eight hours, sorry, eight, eight days. Eight, days. <laughs> eight hours would be impressive. And flying down, yeah. <laughs> no, eight days, no, I'm probably nine, nine and a half, yeah. All right, well, I'm going to check in with Cindy and find out what the uh, HP yes. technology is that's going on. There's lots of things going uh, on uh, last year, but even more now this year from HP side. And it's a great uh, uh, opportunity for me to have HP on board and also Intel now. We've got a car behind us that uh, drove the Cape to Cape or, or a car like this one drove the Correct. Cape to Cape. Uh, what is HP's involvement and uh, wh why, why put HP products in a car? Well, HP particip participated in the uh, in the journey uh, really two di two different ways. Uh, one, we actually helped uh, the driver from a social media perspective. So we were able to create an app that people can download on their phones and uh, sort of have some interaction with them during the trek. Uh, give them a little bit of en encouragement, give them a little bit of feedback. You know, kind of watch it as it was going, as if they were sort of watching it from a bird's eye view. Um, the other thing that HP did was, although we did not provide the actual sensor equipment we wrote an application to, we, to capture the data from those sensors. And then we uploaded it to our public cloud uh, with Helion and then used our Haven uh, uh, platform and our analytic services to really analyze that data as almost a grand experiment. Let's see what we could learn by capturing the data from this 19,000 kilometer journey. And, and what did you learn? Well, we actually learned some really interesting things. Uh, while we did not use analytics to help guide them during the trip, it was really more after the fact, we actually came up with some really interesting use cases of what we could do with data uh, from a sort of a connected car environment. Uh, we came up with one use case that was really kind of a social media uh, effectiveness tool. We, you can see behind us, we have lots of sponsors on there. Which sponsors were sort of getting the value out of that investment by what, having followers actively engage and promote, uh, pr promote uh, them? Uh, another one was sort of using the sensors to kind of see what, uh, what uh, surface they were driving on, whether they're driving on smooth asphalt or, uh, or really bumpy uh, roads. And the idea from that was maybe we could use that, uh, this sort of machine-to-machine -machine sensor, maybe say in a public uh, bus system where we could put sensors on buses and as they're driving and picking up passengers all day long and they constantly hit a rough patch where they could maybe use uh, scarce municipal uh, funds to go repair roads more effectively because they sort of say, hey, I see a problem here. Every time a bus goes over there, maybe an example like that. Um, they also did something with uh, that they were calling user-based uh, user or usage-based uh, insurance 
where, we, where they were driving, uh, where they were analyzing the driving habits of the three, they actually had three drivers in there, and they kind of clustered them and found out who was accelerating very quickly, who was braking very aggressively. Uh, and it, we thought a, a commercial application might be, hey, could insurance companies uh, offer something where they said, hey, we'll charge you based on sort of a pay how you drive. And, and actually, you know, a, a, third, <laughs> a, a spin on that would be, uh, car rental companies looking at the users of the cars to see if they Absolutely. should charge more based on how they drive. Absolutely. You can think of a lot of different, whether it's you know a boat or forklift drivers or taxi drivers or, or anything. So it really shows the power of how capturing all this data and using big data and analytics to really sort of help uh, craft pretty interesting solutions to help out.